Welcome to episode 152 of the Confidence Through Health podcast. In this episode, I interview Betty Lou, and we talk about her business, Confetti Snacks. The reason that's important is because it's a health food snack. It is a plant-based snack. It is veggie chips. It is mushroom chips. And she talks about much more on the way is what's coming. But she talks about her passion of bringing cultures together and bringing foods from all around the world together and making it accessible to people. And that's why she wanted to go into the uh, the snack business and into uh, chip specifically, uh, at least to get started in bringing nutritious foods to people. Because as we all know, a, a fruit or vegetable is perishable. It goes bad pretty quickly if it's not cared for in a, like a freezing manner or dehydrated manner. And so uh, she has developed through years of testing uh, a way of providing nutrient rich snacks for people that taste great. She talks about how they test them. She talks about the team, how they develop them and the purpose behind it. And I mean, it was very infectious conversation. Um, I was very intrigued, enthused, ready to help her, uh, promote her product, but her mission more importantly. And so I hope that you enjoy this. I hope that you get some value and, and start to think about where you're getting your snacks, how you're getting, uh, obviously your food and nutrition. That's important to me. Um, but how we can help others around the world experience, uh, both our culture and their culture. All right. So thank you, Betty, for being a guest on the Confidence Through Health podcast. Thanks, Jerry, for having me. So, when I heard about confetti snacks and and what you're doing with um, not just veggie snacks, because I think, I, I mean, I've heard of veggie chips before, but I heard mushroom chips and I was like, oh my gosh. And I started researching a little bit and like, I really like the story and, and the plant-based piece hits me as a, as a nutrition piece and, and I'm plant-based myself. And so it's, it's important to me, but I, I really want to know how, how did you get started? Like, why was this? Because the snack business is, I'm sure, like crowded with all kinds of competition. Yes, indeed. Yeah. So, um, yeah, great question. So, Jerry, I, I started this when um, I took a um, retirement when I was 27. Okay. Uh, I'm the only child and brought up by a single mom. Uh, she she retired from a long career of uh, philanthropy. And I, um, you know, she wanted to see uh, the world with her only child before she gets, uh, she got too old. So I, right. I left to travel around um, with with my mom uh, when I was twenty seven, and we we went on a long term uh, trip around the world for four years. Oh, wow. uh, and you know, I was really fascinated with the different cultures of the world. You know, mm-hmm. despite the fact that I don't understand the language in a lot of the countries I went to, um, but. The thing that really binds and brings me closer to people and cultures is always the food. So being a right. huge foodie and loving um, to cook myself, uh, I decided to experiment um, with various um, uh, recipes that I missed from Singapore, which is a huge you know, culinary culture. Right. Um, and it is a huge melting pot of different cultures, uh, right. much, much alike uh, United States. So um, I was hiking up, you know, I, I do a lot of hikes. So I was hiking up the mountains of um, British Columbia in Garibaldi National Park in Canada. And, you know, I was getting to the point that I was very tired of, you know, protein bars, which which tasted mm-hmm. a lot like like chalk. And um, right. we have uh, potato chips that gave me a sore throat. So I felt like because there isn't a dream snack that I could go to, uh, I decided to create one myself using my... Um, you know, dehydrating veggies that I found in the farmer's markets right. and uh, baking them myself and seasoning them with flavors that I miss from home in Singapore. So that's how Confetti started. Um, I noticed that more than 95% of the market share is an ocean of white foods. You know, everything oh, is yeah. either extruded corn puffs or deep fried potato chips. You know, even veggie straws, um, you know, are still extruded from potato starch, which is the right. primary ingredient, and seasoned with like 2% of, of carrot powder or spinach powder. <laughs> so that's really, to me, it's, it's, it's not really a veggie itself. So right. I thought, you know, how can we use real veggies? You know, there are literally thousands of species of uh, plants 
uh, and veggies in the planet, why aren't they being made into snacks? So I started doing that, taking low starch veggies, like you can see here, uh, carrots, radishes, shiitake mushrooms, okra. Um, you know, how can we use these real veggies, slice them up and gently craft them to crunchy Moorish snacks that taste right. better than potato chips uh, without the guilt. And then how can we also season them with um, authentic um, flavors from around the world to really mm -hmm. celebrate uh, culture, diversity and inclusion. Yep. So that's the genesis of how Confetti came came to start. And, and I saw on your website, like the, it, it took years to get it correct to the right, like taste and texture and all of that, right? Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I am a perfectionistic OCD person. You know, I really need to make <laughs> right. sure everything is perfect. So we, we experimented hundreds and hundreds of rounds. Um, our entire life revolves around the consumers. So we mm -hmm. tested like crazy before we launched anything. So we actually, um, you know, uh, uh, did many rounds of um, experimentation to ensure that, you know, the mouthfeel is perfect, the crunch is correct, the texture, the taste the nutrient profile, uh, everything is as elevated as much as we can before we launch. Right. Um, branding is the most important part um, of, of any food brand, you know, be it right. Coca-Cola or, or haagen -Dazs. Um, You know, we, we it took a long time to fine tune, getting the right brand name that resonated, right. the right um, uh, impact visually so that mm -hmm. in those nanoseconds that a uh, consumer walks past an owl, they stop and they gravitate towards the brand and it drives a part of their curiosity to even right. try it. So, um, you know, being in a very cutthroat world of snacks where I'm competing with thousands of snack brands, it's really important for our team to come up with something that really stops someone in their tracks and drives them to be curious about it. Right. Um, and, you know, it, we want to go a step further in the sense that a lot of extruded puffs or deep fried snacks in the market mm -hmm. They are nutritionally bankrupt because right. um, at temperatures of 180 to 200 degrees Celsius, most of the plants can't survive uh, that kind of heat and uh, being heavily processed actually destroys a lot of nutrients of the plants. Right. I mean, even potato is a vegetable, but um, right. most of, you know, they can't survive, the nutrition can't survive that kind of, um, that kind of temperatures. So we, we got it down to about 86 degrees Celsius where we um, gently bake the snacks. Okay. So even our shiitake mushrooms are an excellent source of iron, um, zinc, and um, uh, iron, zinc, and potassium. And okay. this is really very much uh, because, and this is not something that is fortified. We didn't add that inside, right. <laughs> but more right. like uh, it's mother nature, which yeah. naturally, inherently, of the, the mushrooms already have certain minerals that we are just, accentuating by uh, cooking it at a very low temperature. Well, and you mentioned something there that I, I know I've said this to people before, like be careful of something that says it's fortified with whatever the ingredient is, because if you think of like, okay, this, thump, this, this product is supposed to have this ingredient in it, whether it's calcium or potassium or whatever, but then it says fortified with that ingredient. And then you're like, well, if it's supposed to have it naturally, why would they have to put it back in, right? It's because they destroyed it in the processing and then they had to put it back in at the end. Am I, am I saying that correctly? Yes, you're absolutely right. And um, yeah, I just feel like in this world where everything is like reconstituted and then mm -hmm. unconstituted and then in the end, we don't even recognize food anymore. And, right. you know, how I really want to really revolutionize in the snack industry is to show people, you know, as close to Mother Nature as we can, what, right. what a vegetable looked like. How can we drive curiosity um, in, you know, children and families from, you know, even a very young age? Um, you know, when we tested in America, you know, I, I come from Singapore, which is halfway right. across the world. But when right. I came to America, I really needed to test like crazy before mm -hmm. we actually launched. And, um, you know, we got children so addicted to to these snacks and they are the best um, tasters in the world. They are very mm -hmm. refined taste buds. They don't lie. You know, they tell right. you the honest truth whether you like right. it or not. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And I, I love that. I always start with children, you know, as young as yeah. I can. And for them to be so addicted to our, to our snacks really... And, and get, get get their parents to get more for them 
um, only because they're so fascinated with the colors. You know, the fact that, wow, I didn't know a radish looks like that or a okra right. or a mushroom looks like that. They played around with the textures. They were so, you know, intrigued at, you know, they start asking their parents, what is tandoori curry? You know, which mm-hmm. country is that from? And then it's, it becomes a, like almost an enriching education experience. Yeah. Where they tell them that, okay, teriyaki is from Japan. T- tandoori is actually, you know, a cuisine from India. It right. actually brings them in touch with humanity and cultures. And that's really what we want, you know, to instill in, in youths and children of tomorrow uh, mm-hmm. and get them acquainted with, you know, different plants that exist. Yeah. Uh, and and what they taste like, and and if we can convince them at a young age that this tastes better than the puff and right. deep fried variety out there, we have a real chance of getting them to eat healthier diets and include more plants. In it. Just because it tastes good, not because it's healthy, but because right. it tastes better. Right. And I I think that we should always win them by taste, not not being preachy to them, <laughs> in the sense right. that oh uh, the nutritionist says X Y Z. I I think it's more about the taste at the end of the day. If mm-hmm. if the taste is good, they're gonna come back a million times, and if we can win them by that, and the secondary thought that they have after consuming a bag of confetti is that, you know, hey, it's also very nutrient dense. It makes you right. feel good, um, and without the guilt feel, that the fact that you're eating real wholesome veggies and fruit. Um, I think that that is a plus thing. That is a secondary thought, but the first moment of truth is actually the taste profile and the texture. And right. I do feel like, yeah, we 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 need to be really obsessed in in winning on that front. Well, I agree with you because I've got uh, family members older than me that are you know a generation above me that that uh, have struggled with their health and you know trying to help them eat better and eat more nutritious vegetables and plants and um as opposed to just the the deep fried foods and in in just the the like the one color wheel like just the potatoes like you said like everything's just that white color um and i <laughs> multiple people have said like well how come it tastes horrible if it's good for me and i'm like okay well it that it's more of a like it one, it's the it's the product that you're buying because it wasn't made. I think in a it, it was more of those fortified things, and so it was stripped down, like you said. But then I think the other is that it because it wasn't introduced at such a young age in a way that was tasty. Because my kids love vegetables because we introduced them early and we introduced a variety of them, and so like they'll they'll go for veggies and fruit above, and they're t- they're eleven and thirteen. Um, now, granted, of course, they will wow. go for their sugary stuff too. Like, I'm not going to say they won't, but but they'll eat their vegetables without us really complaining about it because I think we introduced it so early, um, and I think that's key. And so I think you you're going after kids to validate: Are we doing these things right? And are we, you know, from a taste standpoint, I think is right on the money. Yes, absolutely, and I think. Um... Yeah, children, like, uh, they're so impressionable. So yep. um, whatever acquired taste they have really young, it stays with them for life. Mm-hmm. And I think I think that's the, the key, right? You know, half of Americans are obese. They have really shitty diets, pardon my language. Yep. Yep. But, you know, the, everything they eat is just one color and it's ho- horrible. So, yep. like, to prevent, you know, the tragedy of, of get them getting type 2 diabetes or, or a heart attack yep. <laughs> as a, you know, an, an adult, I think it's really important to, to start young. And, you know, once you have the acquired taste of of having colors and, and plants, I think there's no other choice. I mean, even just from a taste perspective, it becomes an indulgent treat. And, right. um, yeah, and I, I think that's uh, the reason why, um, you know, Confetti really targets families because um, we want adults and as much as children to really mm-hmm. experience what a, a taste could be, um, the t- a taste of a snack could be when right. we think outside the box, when we color outside the box quite, quite literally yeah. in the sense that snacks don't have to be one color can it be right. different colors can it be from real plants you know can it taste better than a potato chip and i think that's the thing that um constantly drives our team every day when we innovate mm-hmm. and when we experiment well and one of the things that i i saw on your website is i love the way that you you brought the name out confetti and what what that like the the meaning behind or that maybe not the meaning but like how you came about that so like Tell tell how that came about because I think it's it's important to understand that connection because it's confetti doesn't necessarily sound like a snack food just by itself. 
Oh yes, absolutely. <laughs> I want. Uh, we needed something really uh, short and sweet to mm-hmm. to be memorable. Uh, more importantly, you know, it comes back to what we talk about. Uh, what what is the the genesis and what is the positioning of this brand that needs mm-hmm. to stand out in a marketplace that is oversaturated and crowded? You know, um, and it comes back to celebrating colors. Um, yeah. you know, color from not only the veggies and the real wholesome, um, produce that we use. Um, that are upcycled, which I can um go to later. But mm. more importantly, it's a celebration of of life. You know, the the world is made of very colorful cultures. Right. How can we celebrate that? How can we, you know, personify a uh, iconic dish like green curry that represents Thailand, truffle that represents Europe, mm-hmm. tandoori that represents India, and teriyaki which which celebrates Japanese culture. You know, the world is colorful. Can someone? Right you know, eat these plants, you know, and start thinking and be transported to a place like Japan and wonder right. what is it like there. And that's a lot of my adult life was in Singapore, which is a very safe bubble, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I I often fantasize about being in a different country, um, you know, with the kind of hustle and bustle and the crazy speeds that we move in urban societies. Mm-hmm. Um, it, I always transport myself to a different part of the world just to escape. And um, I, I think that kind of brings people together because uh, um, the more we travel, the more we expand our horizons. Right. We feel curious about people. And that is actually how, you know, humanity is brought together and there's less misunderstandings and there's less, right. you know, chances of racism even happening or, or things like Black Lives Matter. I mean, if, if we actually travel to these places and had friends in these cultures, mm-hmm. I don't think that things like, you know, Asian hate or Black Lives Matter would even have cropped up if people just right. traveled more and, and had more friends in different cultures. So, right. um, and, and I personally grew up, you know, being so inspired by my my friends, they all came from different cultures. You know, I have Indian classmates, Malay classmates, Eurasian classmates. Um, that that kind of exposure was so ingrained to me and racial yeah. harmony was so ingrained to me. And I feel like if if food was not a barrier in language, as I experienced in, in my years of travels, then um, how can we create something that's a tribute back to the world and humanity right. and, and bring people together through food as well? Well, and it's, I mean, it shows in what you've done because not only is the packaging colorful, but like the, 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 the ingredients in the snack in the packaging is colorful, you know? And so it shows that you're doing that throughout the whole, I mean, so it really shows on the purpose of it. And that's, I, that's why I wanted to ask about it because it's, it's, and it, and it shows that like on the other side of it, I look at it and go confetti. Okay. Confetti is supposed to be, cause you're, you're partying, you're happy. There's confetti around, and it's like celebrate that with plants, right? Like I think that's a that's a great also connection to be able to, to be able to make with that. Yes, absolutely. And um, I think when you open up a bag of confetti, you know, it's a it's a kaleidoscope of colors and mm-hmm. textures, and people get really um, surprised. Like you know, we we sell in Louisiana where the heart of soul food is. You know, right? And a lot of um, you know, they have the shrimp and grit. They have, mm-hmm. um, you know, okra with Cajun spices. You know, that that was amazing. I mean, they have some of the best food in America and it's right. really authentic. But, you know, the moment where someone there tries an okra and it's usually slimy, but right. off the back, it's really crunchy and delicious. And they, they, they go like, wow, you know, this is completely surprising to me in terms of texture and taste. And, uh, you know, we derive a lot of uh, satisfaction from that. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, introducing different... Uh, veggies into someone's diets and see, allowing them to experience uh, another culture from a far found place of right. the world right. um, and, and have them experience an astonishing moment. I think confetti is like that, that explosion and the celebration right. of colors that we really want to, to bring to someone's palate. And I know another big focus is like, well, yeah, and I was going to get onto like the the upcycling of foods that are not necessarily like grocery store quality, right? Like, um, but but in a combination of, you know, uh, yeah, I know your website said it's non GMO um, and, and gluten free, which I think are two they're they're buzzwords right now in the in the world, but they're also buzzwords because they're they're we're finding very important to avoid for our health. 
Yes, indeed. Um, I think, you know, one one major thing I noticed when I was uh, traveling around the world is the sheer amount of food waste that happens. Right. Um, you know, f- yeah, produce is so uh, per- per- perishable. You know, they have mm-hmm. normally a shelf life of one week. If right. you go down to a, a fruit like uh, avocado, you know, literally, you know, just one day after it would be overripe and then it's, it's thrown out or people don't want to eat it anymore. Right. So um, because they are so sensitive and they are so packed with nutrients, um when we go into any of the supermarkets, you know, everything is consistent. You know, all the tomatoes are exactly right. the same size. Right. They have to be, <laughs> you know, really polished. Yeah. And um, and all these imperfect produce, they don't even make it on the shelves. They just yeah. get rejected as B-grade products, even though they are, you know, similarly nutrient-dense, nutritious, delicious, packed with vitamins. Right. Uh, but, you know, they are thrown away really carelessly. And very um, unfortunately, just because they are the wrong size or the wrong shape. Right. And, you know, that accounts for majority of the edible produce being thrown away. Mm-hmm. Um, nearly half of edible produce don't make it on the shelves. Uh, they end wow. up in a landfill. And, um, and also due to crop surpluses, you know, farms, plantations, um, they can't gauge exactly how much the retailer needs. So they right. always produce in excess. And right. whatever is left over get mindlessly thrown away. Uh, or they just rot and then they can't be sellable anymore. Right. So how can we harness that um, as a company to turn them into something that is uh, a snack with a one to two year shelf life? Mm-hmm. We are not only preserving the freshness and the nutritional integrity of the produce at the moment that they are produced, uh, keeping them for as long as we can, you know, and turning them and elevating them to its best use. You know, right. something that is delicious, is really nutrient dense, is really colorful and mm-hmm. how can we preserve that uh, and extend the the shelf life of the produce for as long as we can so that right. we prevent them from being wasted uh yeah it's something that we we really strive to resolve yeah. um and to get these right because they're land uh, going towards the landfill or uh, anyway you know for us as a company uh, to be upcycled um to place a focus on upcycling is is really good for business as well because we will get this produce uh, at a cheaper rate, right? And um, it 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 reduces our cost and increases our profit margin. Mm-hmm. So you know, um, being uh, ethically, um, you know, ethically um, driven towards mm-hmm. sustainability and the environment actually <clears throat> helps us in in terms of dollars and cents as well as a as a business. So mm-hmm. at the end of the day. You know, we, we are not a charity. We are a for-profit business. Sure. We are fighting with the likes of the largest snack companies in the world for shelf right. space. So right. for us to be viable, um, you know, upcycling and being sustainable actually makes a lot of economic sense, even from yeah. a commercial perspective. Right. Uh, well, and I mean, it's it, when, when you hear people say that there's, you know, um, food shortages in different parts of whether it's our country or the world or wherever, that like... It when you and then you hear stats like that where it's like well they're, they're, these farms are just throwing stuff away because it didn't meet our quality standard which is mainly just a, a an appearance right it's not a quality standard on nutrition side it's just an appearance because we want the perfect looking tomato or cucumber or and and I mean I've got a backyard garden and I know they don't all come out looking like that um, but they're just as nutritious and. So you hear about that and then you go like, okay, well, how, and it sounds like you're trying to, to figure out a way around that and, and help people, because I know you also do um, like a, a Robin Hood piece to your business as well. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, yeah, I, uh, I, like what you said earlier, um, it's, it's really about um, aesthetics and, mm-hmm. and, you know, if something doesn't look aesthetically perfect, there's so much, um, you know, demand for perfection. And uh, if something doesn't look aesthetically perfect, you know, it's, it's just rejected very mindlessly. Right. So I, I, I do see some retailers, you know, starting to gravitate towards this, mm-hmm. um, especially as more, you know, media spotlight uh, is geared towards this issue, you mm-hmm. know, in, in places like Sainsbury's or, you know, countries that, uh, companies that pop up in America, such as, you know, Imperfect Foods, Right. or Strife Marketplace or Hungry Harvest, they're actually paying more attention and and actually delivering, you know, odd-shaped odd 
produced to right. consumers' doorsteps and giving them the choice to choose that. And uh, I, I do feel like that, that is great from the fresh produce uh, perspective. Mm -hmm. And for us, it's really, um, you know, how can we celebrate colors? So once you slice an uh, ugly carrot or ugly radish, right. you can't tell that it's ugly anymore. You know, it just becomes right. like a normal chip. And I think that's how we can really solve that, that issue. Yeah. And, you know, mushrooms are weird to start with. I don't think people really care that they are ugly. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's, it's, um, so I think it's more like the size at that, that point. Like if you go to any of the retailers, you notice that the mushrooms are, are the same size somewhat. Right. So uh, if the smaller mushrooms, the tiny ones get rejected and then mm -hmm. they can be baked into our chips. So um, that actually exposes people to how delicious it is. Right. Um, as a startup, you know, we don't have economies of scales like the large conglomerates. Right. So, you know, we are a, a mass premium priced snack and therefore we really need to target a really high income mm -hmm. uh, markets, you know, right. such as United States, Singapore, Hong Kong, Switzerland, really right. targeting places with high disposable income. So that's where the Robin Hood <laughs> part right. uh, comes. You know, like what if we could um, sell in really high-income first-world countries and then donate back to the hungriest people in the world. Right. While we throw away nearly half of edible produce, we have 9 million people uh, die every year from right. hunger and starvation. They don't even have you know, critical food uh, to bring on the table to feed their families. And right. you know, when you look at all these skeletal images from you know, Yemen or U Ethiopia or Afghanistan, like people are literally dying you know, yeah. because um, they are really literally starving to death because they, they can't even get food on the table. And, yeah. you know, the aid agencies give them staples. Uh, if, if they ever get to them, they give them mm -hmm. staples, you know, like bread and rice and beans. Right. But okay. it's all one color. You know, yeah. how can we accentuate that further by giving them uh, veggies with a shelf yeah. life of one to two years to accentuate the vitamins for this group? And when you look at the starving children of of America or Asia, sorry, of Africa, mm -hmm. uh, correction. Yeah, so Africa or, or Asia, you, you can see that um, if these children, uh, if they don't get critical vitamins and minerals at a very young age, it impairs their connective development right. and their, you know, their brain development uh, um, irreversibly. Yep. As in they cannot come back from that. That part of that, that brain is damaged and it, they can't, it affects their adulthood it affects their ability to, you know, uh, uh, absorb education or find a, right. a job in future. It actually ruins their their future livelihood. So how can we change that um, yeah. and fix this problem? So Confetti's, you know, the two main ethos is really about how can we upcycle um, edible produce that they don't go to waste at the same time, uh, pack our top line growth to feeding the hungriest people in the world potentially saving some lives and really elevating them um, right. in a most fundamental way by putting food on their tables. So working yeah. with uh, humanitarian organizations like, you know, Red Cross, the World Food Program and UNICEF, um, we can capitalize on their distribution and logistics supply chain, right. you know, to, to, to add a layer of plants, veg vegetables and colors into their uh, diets. And, and I think that fulfills us a lot as an organization. Oh, I'm sure it does. And it's, it, and it's not just, I mean, it, it's not just, uh, okay, this stuff just went bad. We're going to send it over there, right? It's like, it's the same quality because you said a shelf life of one to two years. So you're sending stuff over there that's, that, that literally could have just been shipped to my house instead. Um, but it's going to them so that you're, they're getting the same nutrients. They're not getting, you know, um, something that is potentially on its, you know, uh, about to go bad, if you will. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, we, I mean, the last thing we want is to donate something and give someone food poisoning. I right. mean, we will yeah. be mitigated <laughs> to death. So right. I think it's more uh, like, you know, top line growth, part of it would yep. go into, um, you know, manufacturing snacks in bulk. Mm -hmm. Uh, right now, we are just donating uh, commercial products, which mm -hmm. are already packed. But moving on, you know, top line growth, a portion of it, we want to just create 
you know, huge gunny sacks, like, you know how it arrives at UNHCR in the refugee camps, mm -hmm. huge sacks of beans and potatoes right. and rice. Right. So what I want to do is like a huge gunny sack of colorful chips like that. So, right. you know, when you have your, your grit or your um, starchy mm -hmm. staple, you can just add, you know, two handfuls of these colorful chips on, right. on top and then it becomes like a well-balanced meal that's right. complete with vegetables, uh, fruit or even um, and the staple itself. Yeah, so I think that that would be very helpful in in fortifying them. Right. And it, and more importantly, this is like uh, a legacy that I really want to leave before I I leave this world. Mm -hmm. um, to like, how can this con continue to contribute to eliminating food loss and you know um, uh, alleviating global hunger and malnutrition? Right. You know, right. years after I've left. Um, and, and I hope that this lasts for, you know, many generations and provide joy and happiness to these people, like no matter how far they are, right. you know, I think the, the world has taught me so much in my travels. And if, if there's a way for us to contribute back using business as a force for good, um, I think that's the only scalable way to leave an impact. And that's why social entrepreneurship is so important to us. You know, the faster we grow commercially, the more we can leave, um, a social or environmental impact as we right. scale. And right. and that is actually sustainable. Whereas charities normally um they have to keep raising donor monies and it's not really right. aligned with market forces. You know, market forces yeah. states that, you know, supply and demand. You know, if someone demands something, they are pouring revenues into it. Mm -hmm. And that allows us to channel um revenues consistently into doing good you know, feed it, feeding the hungry and channeling it back to manufacturing good snacks that are good for the health of consumers. Right. Well, and, and that's like, it, it sounds like you're, you're hitting on all of those fronts, which is great. And I applaud you for that. Um, so when you look at like uh, the, the future of confetti, is it, do, do y'all are y'all working on things that are are sticking with the, with the veggies and mushrooms? Or are we going to see things that are going to be expanded out into other types of plants like fruits um, or other types of snacks besides just besides chips? Yes, I think that that is so exciting. That that makes me um very happy when I wake up uh, yeah. in the morning. Yeah, because I I am a very creative person. If I don't mm. uh, create. I think creation is is like oxygen for me. If I if I don't oh, yeah. create, I literally part of my soul dies, and that's the reason why <laughs> I, I can't get a job. I think I it's really I'm really unemployable in the sense that right. when I when I I tried to work before and you know being part of a cog in the system, doing the same repeating things every day, it, it yep. literally I can feel my soul dying, and it's really yeah. bad. So the only way um you know I can really thrive mentally and creatively is, is when I create and that's where I am really in my element and at my best so you know I don't want to just stop at this this is just like um, a launch uh, product that we wanted mm -hmm. to, to experiment on but you know how can we go a step further and really completely blow someone's mind from right. what we can think of as a snack and completely color of the lines Right. break some bowls and plates and bases and and see what we can do to completely change someone's mind on what a snack should be. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we had some really crazy ideas, like, um, you know, things that perish really, really quickly, like, um, like avocados, you know, how can right. we slice them up, you know, combine them with maybe quinoa chips and cherry tomatoes that are crunchy and create like, you know, maybe a poke bowl, but in a snack form. Oh, wow. uh, yeah. Or can we do <laughs> like a crunchy uh, kale chip, you know, drenched in mm -hmm. satay sauce. Um, you know, there's a very uh, memorable dish I had at a, right. a Michelin star place uh, some time ago in Singapore, which is like char grilled um, eggplant slathered with miso sauce. Oh, uh, wow. how, how can we turn those Michelin dishes into a snack? And yeah. make it really crunchy and delicious. And it stays with someone's mind forever. You know, it's part mm -hmm. of your memory. And yeah. I, I do feel that could be really cool. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, um, you know, Christmas canisters, you know, instead of wafer rolls, how about oh, we yeah. do something like, uh, yeah, like long baby asparagus stalks, which are crunchy. And then we season them with, you know, dill and sour cream. Right. You know, something, you know, and I also want to pay tribute to like the soul food of America. Because mm -hmm. you have so much amazing cuisine from 
Louisiana, Mississippi, right. um, Cajun Creole cuisine that was brought over by the Caribbean people, uh, yeah. African Americans. And that is, you know, the music, the jazz, the, mm -hmm. the, the soul food from that, that place, I think really cements um, American food. And, and there's so much culture there. And I really want to explore that. Like how yeah. can we get, you know, Cuban, Havanese, Afro-American flavors, uh, soul food in? to our yeah. cuisine and maybe do a limited edition, you know, line for right. the jazz festival there. I think yeah. that could be really cool. That and, would be, uh, yeah. Other than, yeah, you know, so other than the large pouches that we do for supermarkets, you know, we want to do mini packs for uh, grab and go, like, you know, mm -hmm. single serves on, on maybe airlines, airports, right. schools, universities. Um, how can we get it a step further and, um, Experiment on ugly fruit as well. How about not not just veggies, but also fruit? Right. So uh, we, we are coming up later this um, this quarter, uh, a range of Mandarin chips, which no other competitor oh, wow. has in the US. Yeah, so very crunchy mandarins. Uh, you know, these are surpluses or they don't make it to shelves. So how right. can we take the segments, uh, dehydrate them really fast, and then turn them into really crunchy snacks that are Moorish? So when uh, when we tested it in New York City, you know, everyone loved it. Like they couldn't yeah. stop eating until they finished the bag and they asked for more, which is um, <laughs> which is the sign that I always need before I introduce right. anything. I need to see people actually finish the whole bag and ask me for more before right. we introduce anything. And so, you know, we are going to start going into the Mandarin, uh, you know, the fruit segment. Right. How can we take the surpluses there and turn them to snacks? And, you know, it looks like half a moon. So we brand it as just half moons, which is an idea from my creative director. Right. You know, he, um, you know, can, it looks like a smile, but it, it's like mm -hmm. when you show it to a child, you, you say, hey, you know, do you want some half moons? You know, you can, you know, um, you can eat a half moon and it's, mm -hmm. it's just a very curious shape. And, right. you know, kids at a very young um, age have amazing, vivid imaginations. And oh, yeah. if yeah, if they associate a Mandarin to a moon and they are, they are so excited telling their friends about, you know, I you know this is a bag of half moons. Right. And then they get very excited about eating veggies and fruit rather than thinking of it as a punishment. A lot of right. kids think of veggies as a punishment. You know, they oh, just yeah. run away from it. But if you market it in a different way, I mm -hmm. think it's all down to marketing and branding. How, how do we yep. serve it in a way that, connects to their to their neurons in their mind yeah. and and really like uh, make it an exciting thing to look forward to rather right. than something that you should run away from um so experimenting with like zucchini or beets or various um fruits mm -hmm. you know like dragon fruit or maybe Ooh. um yeah like can we nice. use dragon fruit or pineapple or you know um yeah avocados and mandarins right. like what what has my competitors not thought of yet and let's work right. on those yeah, so right. it's not only good in terms of differentiating ourselves, but at the same time, you know, for us to really break some rules in the snack industry, I think we really need to think out of the box and it helps us um, really stand out from this saturated crowd as well. Right. Um, yeah, so we feed eight of the 17 goals set forth by United Nations now and really... Um, uh, you know, I mean, we were so bootstrapped at the start. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you, you know, literally every bag of confetti snacks was snapped by an iPhone of right. my creative <laughs> director's yeah. apartment in Brooklyn. Like yeah. literally, we were so uh, bootstrapped that we didn't want to hire any photographers. So right. it's, it's, it's taken from a phone. Uh, this this picture was taken from my apartment in Singapore. And I oh, just wow. felt like, why, why do... You know, there's a lot of founders now who have to raise insane amount of capital and they have mm -hmm. crazy burn rates. I don't think it's necessary. You can just, you know, I started Confetti with um, a few thousand dollars and right. I think you can bootstrap something and test yeah. like crazy. And, you know, once you have some kind of um, uh, adoption in the market and you see that people really like something, you know, yeah. we can just, um, it, at that point, it's very, very e much easier to raise money. And I don't like to burn through cash because yeah. I, I I think it should be respected and right. um, money should be funded to its best use and you know in even now after we have about 25 VCs and angels and the Singapore government who funded us I still want to keep it super bootstrapped and yeah. you know any point that I can save money I you know if, if I can take a picture <laughs> like you know most people they can take a picture from their phones most phones mm -hmm. have very good technology oh, yeah. already so um, it's just like a matter of aesthetic and finding the right lighting 
And right. I, I do feel like, you know, we can do a lot of stuff like that. And yeah. um, we also want to... Oh, by the way, we are in Central Market in Texas. That was oh, my cool. first buyer. That was my first yeah, um, supermarket buyer. And I was so excited because I know that uh, Mark Cuban shops in Central Market. Right. So, uh, you know, fingers crossed, he, he becomes <laughs> one of our shops. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, yeah, so this is um, a mock-up we did for them for um, Christmas. Like, how yeah. can we do, like, uh, the chips and dips that the major uh, potato companies have? Right. Uh, right. Like, why does it need to be guacamole? Like, can, can we try something different? So yeah. our chips and dips fe- special. Um, we are working with Doe, the largest oh, nice. uh, f- yeah, fruit uh, plantation in the world. Yeah. They, um, yeah, they're famous for avocados, pineapple, mm-hmm. you know, bananas and papaya. Yeah. Like all the surpluses that they throw away every year. You know, we are, we are talking to their R&D now to potentially take them uh, and upcycle them to a line of creamy vegan dips that are plant-based. Oh, nice. Yeah, and we can sneak like 50 servings of veggies into every pot of joy. Wow. And, you know, why do they have to be guacamole and salsa? It's so overdone right. for the last 100 years. Like, why can't <laughs> we do, like, a spectrum of, like, really cool yeah. dips? You know, like, yeah. how about mushroom, white truffle, and asparagus as a dip? Like, right. can we do papaya, pineapple as a dip? You know, the 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 world is our oyster. Like, how many oh, yeah. ceilings can we completely crash and smash and create something that is completely shocking or mind-blowing and, mm-hmm. and really put a den in this uh, snack category and I think that that is really fun <laughs> creatively you know even if you don't pay me a single cent of salary I would still want to yeah. do this because it's really fun for me yeah um, and I yeah and also you know we are working with Disney as well um, uh, Mickey and friends go on an adventure around the world in a hot air balloon right. and then maybe we can put different flavors of world cultures and put them in Disney theme parks uh, around cool. the world like Tokyo or Paris or LA right yeah and then you know get these mini packs into schools so millions mm-hmm. of school children right. can learn to love veggies from a young age right and yeah so we we got into US just like months a few months ago and then we the retailers have been really loving the snacks the consumers as well right. so we got into eight states um uh pretty much overnight you know now we are wow. supplying to yeah cities like uh, New York uh, Texas, uh, Chicago, you know, Colorado, California, mm-hmm. and Seattle, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Uh, so nice. these are the eight. And uh, we also started supplying to luxury hotels like uh, Mandarin Oriental, Hilton, right. uh, JW Marriott in Austin, actually. And then um, we have, um, yeah, the Marriott Group, you know, all the five-star hotels right. are really where, yeah, they, you know, the discerning consumers there have a very refined palate. And at the same time, they are very educated. They are very well-traveled. You know, they want something that, that would excite them in the excite their taste buds. Um, And at the same time, it's plant-based. So they are normally also very health conscious and um, it's, it really suits the lifestyle a lot. And that's the reason why we see a lot of um, interest from Horeca channels and travel retail channels as well. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's amazing, and, and I love the 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 innovation and the way you're heading, like the 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 new ideas. Um, because I think I, I agree with you. I think that that there needs to be some healthier dips out there to go with healthier snack chips, um, because there's just not a lot. Um, but being able to in in the 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 items that you've got, like that you're talking about, avocados beets mushrooms i mean these are some of the most nutritious products out there that if we just stop and expose ourselves to them from the taste standpoint a a lot of people won't even come close to an avocado unless it's chopped up and put in a guacamole with a bunch of stuff that probably doesn't need to be in our body um you know and there's a lot of people that won't eat mushrooms there's a lot of people i know that won't come close to a beet but these are some of the things that are the most nutritious um, when it comes to plants. And so being able to put that in there um, with a chip that's also nutritious, I think is that you're, you're cutting edge. It's, it's, I, th- I think it's what you're doing is great. Thank you so much. <laughs> yeah. Thanks so much, um, uh, uh, Jerry. And you know, this really drives us is uh, like even child grilled aubergines or eggplant. Mm-hmm. You know, that, that kind of smokiness or umami taste 
Right. You know, if we can do something with that, um, I think that that really drives us, and it's good that we have a crazy team that is like yeah. almost as as crazy as me. You know, we we like to you know we like to look at shocked faces, and I, I right. think that drives us. You know, how how many scary risks can we take? Um, you know, the scarier the risk, the better for us, and right. and I think that's uh, the only way that true innovation can happen, because right. um, a lot of um, I, I think that when people try to be safe, uh, that that really limits them creatively, mm-hmm. and and I think creativity is is the opposite of that. It's it's really about taking risks, but at the same time, um, the most fundamental issue that we have to overcome as a, a food company is always about the taste, and that right. that is what wins us loyalty in the long run. Yeah. yeah, and I think that is, is really fun. And, you know, in terms of uh, guerrilla marketing, you know, mm-hmm. point of sale displays, um, you know, I'm a first-time entrepreneur and this is my first business. So yeah. I am literally, this is a 24-7 yeah. job for me. It, I, it's like, <laughs> right. a, you know, you have, you are a dad, right? And I, oh, yeah. and you know, I, I don't have, you are a dad, but I, I'm I'm not a parent. <laughs> yeah. So this is like a child and I do feel like it's, it's the same as having a child because, you know, your mind is working non-stop about this thing mm-hmm. and um, you have to keep showering it with a lot of care and love and and have fun with it and right. also about you know because I'm a first time entrepreneur there's a lot of things I, I don't know I sure. know that I don't know and there's also a lot of things that I don't know that I don't know and right. it's really important in that sense to find a bunch of very entrepreneurial people or rainmakers or people who have done this before yeah. all the way from you know my sales team to my creative directors, to mm-hmm. my designers, all the way down to the board level. Mm-hmm. You know, who has really done this before? Who can help me? They have went through this process. They know all the bottlenecks and all the challenges right. um, that will come my way. And they can help me navigate through that uh, and to build a unicorn in this space. You know, there's already a lot of fruit chips like, you know, bear or proper right. corn or, or popcorn around. But there's still a very big gap in the market. When you yeah. think of a colorful chip, there's only... Yeah. Terra, and then there's no one else, you know. Right. So how can we use like real veggies and really establish market leadership? When you know, when you when you think of tissue, you you go and get Kleenex. But when you think of a colorful chip, you know, we want to be the first to the mind. But and right. then they're like, hey, go out and get a bag of confetti because right. um we want a colorful chip for our party or for our pantries. So right. how can we really like solidify ourselves in Americans' pantries? And, you know, be the go-to snack when someone thinks of uh, colour. Um, so we are lucky to be backed by really huge billion-dollar VCs, like, you know, right. Gordon Food Service. You know, I, I choose strategic investors, uh, not because of really the money, but more like the strategic uh, right. intelligence that they bring on the table. What distribution do they have? What sales right. calibre do they have to help us reach the, the shelves faster? Mm-hmm. And then also... Um, Getting the team is very important because this is a people business. Relationships right. are everything. And, you know, we, we are lucky to have uh, a board who have created um, brands from a tiny startup mm-hmm. into a multi-billion uh, dollar exit. For example, yeah. you know, Oatly, Vitamin Water, Pop Chips, Honesty. So, you know, f- for the skill set that they, that they had to build a company from zero right. into something really big and to mass distribution, it, uh, that kind of skill set is something that I don't have or had the experience of. So right. um, for the gaps that I have, you know, I just bring people along and then yeah. that snowballs into a team that really can help us. Well, you're, you're, do- you're doing it well, it appears, because, um, I mean, to, to break into eight states in such a short time in, in a space where, as you know, it's, it's really hard to get shelf space. Um especially for a new product from a, a new company. Uh, you know, if it was one of the big conglomerates that was doing it, it's no big deal. They can, they can say, okay, here's our new stuff. And we're just going to move this other product over a little bit and put it on the shelf. Um, but like you said, it's a risk taking, but your drive and, and, and this is, I think something that, that I've experienced from more. And I, and I, when I talk to people, the more that they go more health related with their nutrition, the, the more their mind opens up to these are possibilities. Why aren't we doing it this way? Why has nobody done this in, 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 in their area of passion, right? And in, and in your area, it's, it's been the, the food and the cultures and bringing people together 
um, from around the world so that you can taste the different experiences. And, and I can see that as like, it, it's blowing up for you in a good way because you're, you're following that passion and it's just taking that off. And, and I see that in so many people. And, and it's one of the reasons why, I, yes, I want people to eat healthy because I want them to be, you know, not be sick and not spend all their money at their doctor and, and all of those things. Um, but also because it opens your potential for what you can do. You're absolutely right. You know, I can feel that. Um, and I think that's why your podcast series is so valuable because mm-hmm. um, it's, it's so important how you feel inside and your mind right. is so connected to your body. If someone right. is really obese, you know, they are so sluggish, that mm-hmm. affects everything they do. They, that affects every point of creation in their life. And right. I think there's so much untapped human potential. You know, they lose yep. themselves in in junk food, in you know, junk, fa- uh, so much fast food. There are so many fast yep. food in the US, yep. you know, yep. and, and, you know, lose themselves in front of TV. There's so much wasted potential. Yep. That, and I think that's the real tragedy in, in our generation. It's really about why are we wasting so much of our bandwidth? You know, what, right. what kind of crazy potential can you achieve if you're in the peak of your health, if you stop watching so much TV and put yourself in the real life and become... Yep. On TV instead. <laughs> How about right. like stop stop watching TV, TV, but do something valuable with your life and have yeah. a real adventure so that you can be seen on TV instead. So how about right. we reverse everything and turn it upside down? And right. you know, if they if they worked out, you know, you know, for example, right? Um, I have crazy days. You know, I have like twenty meetings every day. Sure. I'm so burnt out all the time. But that that end of the day where I do my five mile run, I completely mm-hmm. forget everything. Yeah. And you know, um, if uh, and and that you know when you go autopilot and you just go mm-hmm. for your run, you know it empties the mind. And when right. you empty your mind, new ideas have a chance to f- to to flow in and rush in. Yep. And that that is so important. And you know having that blood rush to your mind pre- prevents Alzheimer's and you know right. dementia and all the kind of neuro neuro uh, neurological problems that you have uh, as yep. as we age as, as we all in- inevitably will, you yep. know. And that is actually preserving. Um, the, the whole well-being of having a very fruitful, uh, healthy and really meaningful life that that, that gives us a lot of um, satisfaction. Right. And I think that, yeah, just, just a very simple tweak. You, you know how they say uh, habits take three weeks to solidify? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I think, yeah, people just have to go through that three weeks of agony. And then after right. that, it becomes like second nature already. And then that yeah. could really change their life in a very fundamental ways. Right. Yeah, it's it's not so much looking at it like, oh my gosh, if I'm going to make this change, I have to change for the rest of my life. But it's no, just worry about changing for the next three weeks, and then like, okay, that's all my focus has to be on is that three weeks, and then the rest of it will take care of itself if you follow through with the just just the discipline to say, okay, this is who I am now. I'm the person that goes for a walk every day, or I'm the person that eats confetti chips as my snack instead of the standard potato chips. Um, you know, in, in it, it's a, a lot of times we think we have to, we have to think in that absolute, like the long term when it's like, oh, just back up and just do the one little bitty thing first. Because if I'm sure if you would have sat down, you know, when you, when you first had the idea before you went through the two years of testing, before you went through all this and you had the idea and went, I want to be in eight states in America by the end of 2022, you would have probably, probably sat there going how in the, where, where in the world do i start like i don't even know what to do because it's it seems like it's just too big of a goal yes absolutely <laughs> i think baby steps is is really what that matters yep. um yeah all that matters um to your point yep. and um yeah and and that could really really help snowball into something big and uh, I think it's just like a lot of, um, I think it's just very regretful. There's a lot of uh, unfulfilled human potential. Yep. Like I, I was just wondering the other day if everyone stopped watching TV and yeah. Netflix and then they started doing, you know, uh, with all the spare time that they have after work, right. you know, just doing their own projects that could create value. You know, yeah. what kind of world would we be living in? Suddenly there'll right. be a flood of new innovation, inventions, you know, maybe even life-saving things for cancer. Right. I, I, I think there's so much untapped human potential that is not realized. And, yeah. and that's like a, a huge, huge regret. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I, I think, you know, what, what would you say is your main philosophy in terms of, you know, happiness and health? 
do, do you have something that you go by that well, really um yeah i mean i i believe in connecting with yourself um and 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 i'm a spiritual person and so i i spend a little bit of time in prayer every day um but i spend quiet time and like and i were i'm a runner and and I'm, i know a lot of people run with music or and i'm like i i never run with music i a lot of times i run by myself because i want to be just and, and i look around at like what's going on in nature i try to run at least twice a week where i'm out away from the city um you know, and I know a lot of people can't do that, but, you know, get to a park, run through, you know, nature and connect because I think there's, there's, while well, there's a connection in people, we need to relationship and that's a huge piece of it. There's also the connection to the earth and to the, to the, the sun and the universe and, and how we were created was to intertwine with everything. And that's why another reason why I think what you're doing with the, the different veggies that you're including is, it's not just one potato that we're getting when we get a snack. We're getting a variety and we're connecting with so many different plants. And those plants have energy, even though they've been, you know, dried, but they've still got energy and nutrients. And the sharing of all that energy between all of us is in a positive way, is I think what what builds us all up and helps us all get the things done that we want to get done. Yes, absolutely. You're right. And um, yeah, the, I really love the part where you said uh, connecting with nature. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I think yeah. how many people in their hustle and bustle don't even stop and look at a flower or a tree. You know, there's right. so much that you can g- gain from that. There's so much beauty in this world, yep, <laughs> you know, despite is. all the, the challenges and injustice. But I do feel there's so much, you know, um, beauty in this world. And I mm-hmm. think that gratitude is really, really important. And if we start noticing these things, um, yeah, that could really uh, help us mentally. Yep. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and I I do feel like the world produces enough food already. It's just that we are yeah. not, you know, using enough of it. Like, why are we throwing half of it away? <laughs> you right. know, it's it's like if all these food can be used to its highest potential or its maximum shelf life, mm-hmm. um, you know, humans are an amazing, you know, intelligent species. Like, yep. how are we not? How are we letting this happen right now? It's crazy. How yeah. are we throwing half of the food in the world away while, right. while 9 million people die every year? And then yeah. it's, it's, it's actually increasing because of the pandemic and they get even right. fewer resources to food and with, you know, refugee crises and war yeah. and genocide. You know, as I I just feel like we are not making full use of the food that we have today. And right. I think that hopefully, you know, what we discussed today is, is maybe hopefully changing the perspe- perception of right. upcycled food um, sustainability and really, you know, looking at eating healthily as as a, a fun indulgent treat. Right. And yeah, I, I do actually feel that colorful plants taste better than meat or, you know, white foods. Mm-hmm. Like personally, I have already acquired that taste and preference for it. Mm-hmm. You know, I look forward to eating a fresh ripe strawberry or a child right. grilled, you know, um, eggplant. It's actually very, it's something to look forward to, I think. And yeah. um. Yeah, and I think that, you know, having that, seeing that gain traction is is uh, really part about how we package something, how we brand right. something, and really how can we use the best chefs and cooks and, you know, um, food technologists in the world to create something that is really, really tasty so that yeah. we can elevate plants further. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. I feel like I could talk to you for a long time. Um but as you said, you're super busy. And so I greatly appreciate you being on. Um, so the best way, like you, you mentioned there are the confetti's in different um, states, but if, if somebody's in a state or a country where, you know, they can't just go to the store and get it, um, what's the best way for them to be able to, to experience confetti? Oh, yes. Uh, so they are um, uh, different ways. So, for example, uh, if they are in Texas, they can go to Central Market. I think mm-hmm. yeah, we are in most of the chain there. Um, you know, they can uh, look um, into different trendy stores and specialty stores um, okay. in the major uh, um, uh, trendy cities, like, you know, mm-hmm. the Good Smart in New York City. You know, um, we are also getting uh, live in Huckleberries in Seattle soon. Uh, okay. So as we go, you know, we will definitely make announcements on our website. Mm-hmm. Uh, but they can also just uh, send us an email on wow, W-O-W, at confettisnacks.com to place an order. 
uh, or they can just order direct to our website. You know, we have inventory in both coasts, you know, California and Philly, where we can just send to any uh, zip code throughout United States and Canada. Awesome. Yeah. And uh, thanks so much, Jerry, for really sharing your philosophy today. I'm I'm very, um, I've learned a lot from this conversation and, um, Hopefully, we can meet uh, in person at some point. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah, sounds good.